Welcome one and all to CST8215, uh, Introduction to Database, the Fall 2022 edition. I am recording this to save ourselves a little bit of time since our first lecture is canceled due to Algonquin Day 1. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the course introduction. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Daniel Goudreau. Uh, I usually go by Dan. Um, I graduated from college in 1996, specifically Canada College in North Bay. Um, I've been working as a professional developer ever since. Uh, literally in the last 26 years, I've been unemployed for a grand total of about three to four weeks. Uh, so you've picked a good industry to dive into. I work full time and I teach part time. Uh, I've been teaching for at least 16 years. Um, I think it's closer to 17 now. So I've been doing this for a bit. Uh, my full time job is currently with a with a company called Catlink Technology. Uh, it's a division of uh, EFI, who, which stands for Electronics for Imaging. Um, Catlink Technology just got bought out a couple of months ago, so things are in flux at my day job. Um, I am a full stack web developer, uh, which means I do everything from database design to uh, front end web implementation, uh, manage the web servers, the whole the whole thing. Uh, so I tend to know a, a fair amount about a, many parts of the web development industry. I'm not a specialist in any of them, but you know I know a fair amount of each piece. Uh, so what kind of person am I? Um, I have a loose and easygoing teaching style. I tend to uh, very, be very informal in class, uh, as you will experience. Uh, I've been told that I'm sarcastic. Um, it depends um, on that. I tend to understand that life happens. Um, however, I don't tend to suffer uh, fools. Uh, by that, I mean, yes, you got... You got you caught something, you've got COVID, great, take some time off, I don't want to catch it from you. Or, you know, you were in a car accident and you're hurt and you can't attend class or you can't do submit something on time. Great, or not great, I should say. And I will, you know, be understanding in those situations. However, if you get into like 16 car accidents in a nine week period, just as an excuse to not do any work, then I tend to put you from the, oh, unfortunate pile into the fool pile. And then, you know, I'm going to treat, be pretty hard on you. Uh, I've been told I'm an equal opportunity offender. Um, that means that in class, I will, you know, joke around with students and stuff and nobody's safe. Um, that being said, uh, I do try to be, you know, reasonable and politically correct and all that. And if I do do say something in class that offends you or upsets you, feel free to call me out on it after the fact um, so that I make a point to never do that again. Um, I've gone pretty good at avoiding irritating stuff, but it happens. I'm human. So we have a recommended textbook. Uh, it's Database Processing 16th Edition. Uh, I recommend it. It's really kind of required. Uh, you're going to have some weekly readings in it. Um, you know, it is what it is. So what can you expect uh, this term? Uh, lectures, labs, and assignments. Uh, lectures is when I talk to you guys. Labs is basically homework. Assignments is more homework. Um, and the we have the exam in two pieces. Uh, we don't actually have a midterm. We have a test just before the break. And then we have an exam at the end. Uh, the way the exam works is the first exam covers the first half of the term. The second exam covers the second half of the term. And they're totally separate pieces. Um, so you have two tests. Um, there is also some hybrids, uh, which are not really um, listed here, but you know. Um, lectures are free form. I don't use lecture notes. Don't ask for them. I come with PowerPoint presentation as a memory tool. I've been doing this, A, teaching for so long, B, working with databases for so long that I know this material 
off the back of my hand. I don't, you know, I don't need to really keep lecture notes. I just know what I need to teach you guys. But the PowerPoint, any tests we have are based on content in the PowerPoints and the hybrids. So, you know, there's that. Uh, labs gradually increase in difficulty. So lab one is getting your stuff set up and then they you know it slowly builds up in difficulty. Week seven, it ends, you have a break and then it starts up in difficulty again. Lab nine, I've been told is quite challenging. Um, and lab 10 drops off. It's almost like a, you know, a gimme after lab nine. It's not bad. Um, assignments and labs are submitted via Brightspace, except for the first lab because you have to demo it. Uh, you're always given two weeks. Um, the assignments themselves aren't particularly brutal, so there's no real excuse why you can't get them done. Um, I will be in lab to assist anybody who needs help with the assignments in the lab, so that's what I'm there for. Uh, the midterm test will be in class. And the final exam will be in whatever designated room it is. So this course covers three big topics, design, modeling, and SQL. We will cover design and modeling in the first half, SQL in the second half. So what are you going to be learning? Uh, basic database design, SQL, and I forgot to update this slide. Uh, you're going to learn about views and indexes, but not triggers and stored procedures. Shoot, I forgot to do it. And there's going to be other stuff where I'm going to throw in, you know, some real world knowledge and stuff at you. All going to be in the lectures. How's this course going to be evaluated? Well, it's broken down as follows. So labs are practical submissions. Um, they're worth 25% of your grade, goes weeks one through 14. Hybrids are worth 10%, weeks one through 14. Uh, there's two assignments worth 30%. Uh, they're due week six and week 12, normally. Uh, Midterm. Uh, is 50% of your grade. Um, it'll be either in week seven or week 11. These dates are tentative. That's why I have two potential dates here. It just depends on how things go. Um, should be fine for week seven. I'd like, because if you have it on week seven, that means you don't have to worry about it during your break. And the final exam is 30% during week 15. So very few labs require in-person submission, literally lab one. All the others are submitted on Brightspace via the assignment tool. Uh, currently, the midterm and final exam are planned to be done in person and on paper. Uh, that means that they're closed book. Typical tests. Assignment one and two require submission of files on Brightspace. Uh, further details will be provided as we proceed with the course, obviously. Uh, there's no point going through super details right now. Now, CAL, that's the Center for Accessible Learning. So, CAL is a fantastic tool for students that need extra help. Not extra help as in tutoring. Um, they're there to provide you with a quiet test environment, uh, extended time, in-class accommodations, um, All kinds of things. Uh, so essentially, if you are a Cal student, send me your letter of accommodation by email because you'll need it. Uh, make sure to book your tests in Cal. That means their midterm and your final exam. Um, if you are allocated extra time, because depending on how much time you've been allocated, I might not be able to give you the extra time in class. For the midterm, it can probably be done in class, but the final exam, definitely not going to be done in class. Uh, just going to say. Um, they have, they will, they can also give you access to the tech lab, which can help provide you with um, technological support tools. Um, examples of things I've seen people get over the years is noise cancelling earphones because they live in a loud environment. And they need quiet to study. I've seen, uh, I don't remember what it's called, um, some magic little pen that records the lectures and you can put notes down. Uh, that thing's really cool. Um, and there's been a few other uh, technology things like um, tools to record 
the pros voice if you have your hearing impaired. Uh, they can arrange for, uh, for a, what they call a computerized note taker. Um, that's literally somebody who sits in class with you um, and takes notes on your behalf. Uh, normally, uh, those are for students that are either hard of hearing or have uh, visual issues. So it's a good, um, they have tons of resources for you. Please leverage it if you can. So this is known as a 323 course. It means there's three hours of theory, two hours in class, and there's an hour online. This is known as the hybrid part. Uh, two hours of lab, and normally we expect you to do up to three hours of study time a week. Realistically, for many of you, you won't need the three hours of study time, um, but we list it as, you know, this is something you should allocate to yourself. So what are my rules for success in 8215? One, come to lecture. That should be pretty obvious. However, um, I don't take attendance in lecture. I'll explain why in a bit. However, if you are sick, don't come to class. I don't want you spreading your germs and viruses to everybody else around you. And the last couple of years has proven to us why you shouldn't be, you know, spreading your germs amongst everyone. And I will explain specifically why it's not that bad if you meet, miss a lecture or two. Do your work. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. Do your homework, do your labs. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, hand in your work on time. So we are giving you guys two weeks to do your labs. At the end of two weeks, uh, your assignment will be marked late. If you go two weeks over, I'm going to give you a zero. So at the end of the grace period of the one week, uh, I'd, yeah, you won't even be able to submit your assignment. I'm going to make it go away. And then you'll get a zero, big fat zero. Um, number four, if you don't hear me assign it in class and it's not due, um, this is a really old point. Uh, there once was a time that, uh, we were on a different LMS that randomly liked to change dates and make things appear and disappear, uh, during a slightly buggy period. Uh, so I like to say, if you don't hear me say it in class that you have to do this work, then it's not due. This goes with, uh, announcements. I will be putting out announcements that tell you exactly what you need to do, when you need to do it. Uh, additional resources. Labs are due by the start of, actually, number five doesn't apply. Um, the rules changed. We're giving you guys two weeks going forward. Um, it's all good. So there's an official to pass the course. You must write the final exam. You got to come in and answer at least one question. If you don't do that, it's an automatic fail. If you get a minimum of 50% on tests and exam, that's the 50% for theory. And you got to get 50% on the um, practical assessments, which is the assignment, the labs, um, et cetera, et cetera. So in other words, you have to get 50% on the practical, 50% on the theory. And you got to at least answer one question on the final exam. So what kind of hardware and software are we going to support? Uh, Windows laptops. Uh, now, if you are in a uh, computer programmer, because uh, I really don't know which section you guys are in at this moment, uh, if you're in computer programmer, if you're a computer engineering technology, because uh, it's a shared course. Um, yeah, it, get a Windows laptop. Mac users, um, theoretically, you can run this course on a Mac. It's going to be weird. It's going to be flaky. And I know nothing about Max whatsoever, so you'll be completely on your own. And considering that many of the software you need in level two uh, requires Windows and they will not run on an M1 Mac, like the brand new Max, uh, yeah, you're gonna be SOL. Linux users, hey, knock yourselves out. I can support you, uh, but you're gonna have the same issue as the Mac guys in level two, so you know it is what it is. Um, I can totally support you most of the way on Linux. Uh, your mileage may vary, but honestly, uh, it's just, it's as easy, if not easier on Linux than it is under Windows. So how do you communicate with Dan? Uh, check your Algonquin live email address once a day. Why? Uh, because, you know, I might send out announcements. 
Reply from Algonquin Live email address only. Don't send me messages from your Gmail um, or Hotmail or whatever the heck else. Uh, why? Uh, one, the college spam filters may mark it as uh. Um, two, it's easier for me to make sure I am who I'm supposed to be talking to. Um, don't send an email from Brightspace. They're just, they're, it will likely not reach me. Uh, I think they recently fixed it, but even that, I wouldn't bet my money on that. I always include your name and your student number and ideally what section you're in. Uh, but considering you're all my students in my lab and I have all the lab sections, that, that's not as important. Okay, lecture recording. I try to record all my lectures. It's a value-added service and there's no guarantee. I'm not required by the school to record my lectures. I choose to do it for a few reasons. One, if you're sick, don't come to class. But the good news is you will not lose out on content. So I think that's fair. Um, the only big issue is if you don't come to class, you won't be able to ask questions in real time. <coughs> but I'd rather not catch whatever you have. So that's good. It is normally uploaded to YouTube within one or two days, which is also good. Um, there's a link here to my channel. There's my historical lectures are pretty much all there, so it's all good. Now, I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of the Brightspace shell for this course. And I'm going to put myself in the student view so that you have a more appropriate view of what it looks like. So in here, we have a few items you should be looking at. Um, there's contact information here about that. Uh, course information, how the grades are broken down. Um, a few important documents from the school and our CSI. Again, some contact information. I'm um, just using a gen general uh, template. That's why you'll see my email address and my name all over the place. I'm also your lab prof, so you know that's kind of fun. Um, weekly lecture material. So in here, you will see the weekly material appear as we need it. Um, apparently, I haven't turned off week six, but that's fine. Um, in here, you will have um, all the presentations you need, the lecture slides and all that jazz. Um, labs is where your work that you need to do is gonna be found. Um, as they come up, you will see them here. There's tons of lab information up here, which I just I still need to clean out the shell a little bit. Um, assignments, when assignments come up, will be in here. Uh, hybrid tasks, all the hybrids are up. Um, I'm going to be hiding a few of these because you don't need them till the second half of the term. Uh, but that's where everything is in Brightspace for you guys. Um, if you are trying to find your grades, it's under grades. Various activities are also here under assignments and groups, quizzes, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, under progress, again, you can check your, your grades and that kind of stuff. Um, course outline will bring you to the course outline. In comms, there it is. Shows you everything you're supposed to be learning. Um, and the calendar will show you when things are due, um, or it should, but it's not showing up, probably because I'm not quite a student when I'm set up like this. Outside of that, uh, I look forward to talking to you guys. Um, I will see at least three lab sections before, before the first lecture. Um, so I'll say hi when I get there, but I've already introduced myself, so it won't be a big heavy duty introduction. Uh, you should have a rough idea of who I am. I totally understand that the first week is going to be disorientating as can be. Um, some of the classes are actually kind of hard to find. Um, but that's fine. We can roll with it. So I'll be really patient for the first week or two as you find your way around the school. Uh, especially if you're new to the college life experience, it will be a little bit overwhelming, but that's okay. Um, 
after a couple of weeks, you'll settle right in and it'll feel start feeling natural. So without further ado, I'm going to sign off from this video and have a good day.